Microsoft has agreed to acquire Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion, making this acquisition the largest buyout in video game history. And that's not by any small margins. Prior to this, it was Take-Two's acquisition of Zynga for $12.7 billion, which only happened a week ago. If Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax Bethesda wasn't enough of a big deal, well, then it's hard to imagine it getting any bigger than this. With Activision Blizzard now coming into the fold, that makes Microsoft the home to 34 developers. So, here's an updated list to every major franchise and studio that Microsoft now owns. Let's start with the new ones to the Xbox family. Activision, which basically means Call of Duty. That's right, Call of Duty and all of its developers, which are quite a few, including Treyarch, responsible for Black Ops, Infinity Ward, which spearheads Modern Warfare and Warzone, and Sledgehammer Games, the folks behind Vanguard and World War II. Along with it, that means all of COD's support studios like Raven Software, Beanox Entertainment, Radical Entertainment, and High Moon Studios. In an interesting twist, this also now means Crash Bandicoot is under the Microsoft umbrella. Developer Toys for Bob, makers of the recent Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, and Skylanders, also making Spyro a Microsoft property now. Oh, and Tony Hawk. The Tony Hawk game franchise has been a part of Activision since its conception in 1999. The recent remake of 1 and 2 was developed by Vicarious Visions, which has since been made a subsidiary studio of Blizzard. Now let's go on to the other part of this acquisition, which is Blizzard, which now makes Microsoft the adoptive parents to some of the biggest franchises in gaming history. We are talking Warcraft, Diablo, Starcraft, Overwatch, Hearthstone, and Lost Vikings. This is especially fascinating considering the emphasis some of these games have in the esports realm, specifically Overwatch. This money-making train doesn't start and end with console and PC gaming, but also mobile. Since developer King is a juggernaut all its own under the Activision Blizzard acquisition. With King, Microsoft will own Candy Crush, Farm Heroes Saga, Diamond Diaries Saga, and Pet Rescue. For context, King was acquired by Activision in 2015 for $5.9 billion. So those are the major franchises and studios now coming into the big ol' house of Microsoft. But while we're at it, let's go over all the other stuff that Microsoft also now has. In 2020, Microsoft surprised all of us with the acquisition of ZeniMax Bethesda Softworks for $7.5 billion. And to think, that number was shocking. Here's what that brought along with it. Bethesda Game Studios, of course, developer of the mainline Elder Scrolls games, Fallout, and the highly anticipated soon-to-come Starfield. ZeniMax Online, developers of the Elder Scrolls Online. Tango Gameworks, makers of The Evil Within, and, interestingly, the Sony-timed exclusive Ghostwire Tokyo. Id Software, the devs responsible for Doom and Quake. Arcane Studios, the folks responsible for Dishonored Prey and the PlayStation timed exclusive Deathloop. Machine Games, or rather, the Nazi ass kicking studio. These are the folks that revitalized Wolfenstein back in 2014 with New Order and are helming a new Indiana Jones game. And I know possibly, or at least assumably, they're working on Wolfenstein 3. Um, that, I mean, I hope that would be cool for me. Yeah. There's also Roundhouse Studios, but as of this video, what they're working on is still a mystery. Then there's the OG Microsoft first party devs, the ones that Microsoft's been collecting and picking up over time. But don't be fooled, there's some heavy hitters here to bolster Microsoft's enormous catalog of first party IPs. So of course, there's 343 Industries, the all things Halo developer. World's Edge, they're the devs that oversee Age of Empires. The Coalition, the studio that took over the Gears of War franchise. The Coalition recently worked with Warner Brothers on the impressive Matrix Awakens experience. Is a Matrix game on the way under the Coalition Microsoft name? Hmm. Only speculation, but I'm sure it'd be cool. Compulsion Games, developers of We Happy Few, with something unannounced cooking in the oven. Double Fine Productions, the creative minds behind Psychonauts 2, Broken Age, and Brutal Legend. The Initiative, 
What was simply rumored as Microsoft's big quadruple A gaming studio is officially working on the next Perfect Dark game. Then there's In Exile, the developer of the Wasteland series, Mojang Studio, aka the Minecraft Studio, one of Microsoft's also lofty acquisitions a few years back for the now seemingly modest looking, but still by no means cheap in any regard, $2.5 billion. Ninja Theory, the folks responsible for Hellblade and its upcoming sequel, Senwa's Saga Hellblade 2. They also did Bleeding Edge and are working on the experimental game Project Mara. Obsidian, the role-playing devs. We're talking The Outer Worlds, Fallout New Vegas, Pillars of Eternity, Grounded, and the upcoming Avowed, as well as The Outer Worlds 2. Playground Games, the Forza Horizon devs, but in an interesting twist, they're also helming the upcoming Fable reboot. Speaking of Forza, there's Turn 10, who oversee Forza Motorsport. Then there's Rare. These video game veterans are responsible for Sea of Thieves, Banjo-Kazooie, and the upcoming Ever Wild. Lastly is State of Decay developer Undead Labs, who are currently working on State of Decay 3. So yeah, that's... A lot. Those are 34 studios and the many, many big ol' franchises that are now under the Microsoft name. But back to the Activision thing. Aside from the games, what does this mean for the future of Activision's leadership? Microsoft is buying Activision Blizzard at the height of a lawsuit filed by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing against the company for sexual harassment and discrimination directed towards women at the company, with much of the tension falling on the shoulders of Activision CEO Bobby Kotick. Until this deal closes in 2023, Activision Blizzard will operate independently. But after, Bobby Kotick is expected to leave the company, with Activision Blizzard reporting to Phil Spencer as the CEO of Microsoft. Microsoft Gaming. This is a meaningful shift in the perception of the company's leadership and values, which will hopefully have a needed ripple effect across the culture of Activision Blizzard. Nonetheless, the lawsuit continues with the intention of an $18 million settlement to compensate and make amends to eligible claimants. There are still many, many questions, however, like what this deal means for exclusivity. Will juggernaut franchises like Call of Duty only be where Game Pass is available? On the flip side, however, Microsoft continues to support Minecraft with regular updates across multiple platforms, so it looks like time will tell. After all, we still haven't seen the full effects of the Microsoft Bethesda acquisition. Bethesda games like Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo are still PS5 exclusives at the moment. Then there's the case of Psychonauts 2, which was multi-platform. Now, of course, that was abiding a contractual obligation before the acquisition with Microsoft, but nonetheless, it's something to think about. All right, thanks for watching. And for everything news related with games, stay here at GameSpot, the place that talks about games a lot because it's in our name, GameSpot. Okay, bye.